Who's going to take care of the chillin? That's what they keep trying. The churn. The churn. That's what they keep trying to tell us. Yeah, who's going to take care of the churn? Well, I don't know. Well, here on reallibertymedia.com with the chat room and RLM Radio and Gigi's Boo. And we've got, there's a whole bunch of people at least logged into the chat. I don't know who's really here. Uh, There's a couple people who have said something in the last little while, but. Got quite a crew. Of course, Grimner's here. He's the guy that runs this place. Keeps the bills paid and keeps the system running. And I don't know how he does all that. He does his own work as well, which is pretty amazing to me. And he's always handy to help you with an issue if you have some type of some type of technical issue with the programs or you want to do a show or something like that. And he's the guy that can help you with that. It's just amazing what's been going on here for all these years. Years. Eight, eight years. Over eight years. Hmm. Then you got I believe Luke. he said ten. ten. Last huh? week, didn't he say ten? Ten years? I don't know. I, you know, when you get old, you just, time just flies and the years go by. It could have been ten years. Who knows? Well, No, we've been around for eight years. I guess our, I don't know. Our limbs are around for ten. I don't know. But anyway. A whole bunch of people in the chat room. Moose Girl, Kate, Beth, Chalstony, Chloe, Graham Z, I, I be Don C, Java Doctor, JJ, want a revolution. <laughs> That's a new one. Want a revolution. And Meister Brown, Mr. Esmo, Rain, Robworks, Trust No One, Woodman, double heading here. Beetle, Behind the Woodshed, Dakota, Adema, Echelon, Frumpy, Gigi's Boo, Hello, Kozu, Meister Brown, Moi, Nenson, Dubois, Paul Bunyan, Poxified, and Poxaphone. Poxaphone, I like that. Poxahome, <laughs> Prebib, Pawn Saw, Sock Puppet, and the Phantom. There's a, several new new and improved, or maybe clones or spinoffs, or I don't know what you want to call them. But yeah, over 10 years. That's it. I think we've been around for eight. I'm doing something. I don't know. You listen to all this stuff, and, and people just just reminds me how long this has been going on how long we've been talking about essentially all these same things and i listened to hal earlier his show behind the woodshed that's here from three to five on sundays and he's right if we had given up we wouldn't we wouldn't be here we would we still wouldn't be slinging the hash so to speak throwing it out there i think he's right that more people are starting to pick up on this stuff and on the other hand the mediums media (laughs) on which we try to share these messages is they are becoming more tightly controlled and more tightly locked down all the time it's easy to become discouraged when you start looking at numbers and you start doesn't seem like people listen to what you have to say they don't have an interest and to some degree that's there's some truth to that but it's also true, and I have the evidence to support it, that at least in the case of YouTube, they intentionally muck with your numbers, with your view counts and all that kind of thing, to make it appear that not as many people are listening than really are. I have documentary evidence collected over a timeline to show that behavior, to show how they intentionally reduce the view counts of videos. We know this is going on, <laughs> and really there's not not a whole lot you can do about it. I mean, yeah, they're they're fraudulent and they're criminal and all that good stuff, but the, where the rubber meets the road is it's a private service. They allow you to use it, and they farm your data and sell it and make money off of it. That's the, the old adage that nothing in life is free, nothing worth having anyway comes very close to being the case with these sorts of platforms not the case with real liberty media though grimner has been offering this service all this time yeah there have been some increases in chat room attendance and things like that we're talking about 10 years 10 years what is wrong with people of course last week we talked about natalie portman how encouraging it was to see someone like that stand up 
And Hal touched on some of the stuff that I didn't quite get out correctly last week. He touched on it today about this whole insanity with words and and slurs and <laughs> and the meaningless meaningless attacks that for some reason many people have come to believe is true. So I noticed that there was kind of a chill in the air after talking about Natalie Portman. That's just a testament to the effectiveness in which people have been brainwashed. They've been totally brainwashed on many issues. Certainly the Israel issue is one they've been brainwashed on. Hal did a great job today showing the difference between what you think is real and what's real. Anybody who missed that, I encourage you to go back and listen to the blogcaster because he puts it out there. Does anybody want to hear it? Some people. Unfortunately, a great many people of the brainwashed masses will not hear it. They don't want to hear it because they're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid something will come down upon them. The lightning will strike. And on balance, it is rather humorous. But unfortunately, people die as a result of these very fraudulent and criminal belief systems. Anyhow, lots of stuff going on in the news. Gigi, do we want to jump into anything before I get started here? I just wanted to say that people need to get their head out of the sand. I've seen several people who got in touch with me and wanted to know about prepping and this, that, and the other. And I said, man, you should have been prepping years ago and rotating stuff. They, don't, they still don't have a clue. They don't have a clue at all. Nothing. that They don't think anything's going to take place. And all of a sudden, now they're seeing a lot of changes. Tell us what to do. It's like the little boy who hollered, well, it was Chicken Little. Chicken Little, the sky's falling. The right. sky's falling. Yeah, it's going to fall. You just better be ready. Funny you use that metaphor because... Toward the end of the show, we're going to talk about what we didn't talk about last week. Probably the most direct and imminent threat that we face right now that very few are talking about. Certainly the mainstream media isn't so much. And we'll get into that later. But the prepping thing is right on target. I mean, if you're not if you if you don't at least have some game plan established, some network established, even an informal one, that has all the elements of what it takes to operate in a at least a very rudimentary societal way. Now, Let me give you a little example on, on why you should be prepped, especially with water. A town back home in the hills had a break in the water line, and nobody had water. And everybody was having a fit. What are we going to do? We don't have water. Well, we did because I take two-liter pop bottles. I wash them, clean them, put water in it. We just store it. We rotate them, use it out, and we refill. We had enough water for baths. We had plenty of drinking water. And while everybody else was running around looking for something, the grocery store shelves became empty, they said, in a matter of hours. No bottled water. And I was sitting there thinking, if you had been prepared, you wouldn't have had to worry about this. But people are not prepared. And just think if something major happens, what are these people going to do? They take for granted all these things that they have. It's amazed me at how they were running around. They said I couldn't get anything and couldn't get any water or nothing could be had. And I said, well, they don't know where some springs are, do they? Uh, we got all that hid, but uh, they didn't know, didn't have a clue. I just stood in amazement. That's an excellent point. <laughs> what? And, and you know, you sit around here and you talk. You talk to people about all these things, and they, and they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. But then, like you say, as in the chicken little metaphor, when the sky actually falls, <laughs> they oh, you don't want to hear it. It's like I don't want to hear that. I don't know. It's interesting. I have come to believe that this this isn't our first rodeo this way. From I'm mean, speaking from a civilization perspective, it's not our first rodeo, and we we're making yet again the very same mistakes that we've made in the past as people, as human beings, and we're ultimately going to pay the same price. And it's all that's all in the cards. 
And maybe that is the way that Mother Earth shakes its fleas off. That might just be the way it does it. Shakes its fleas off, and the ones who remain are hopefully a little bit more enlightened from the experience and try to share that enlightenment with people later on who may come about. So I don't know. It's very interesting. But anyway, enough of that ranting and raving about things. Let's let's touch on a couple of things. We're talking about preparedness. I think recently I pointed out the fact that the Department of Defense operates a system, a program that's in support of the concept of a well-regulated militia, as much as people don't want to hear that today. And it's called the Civilian Marksmanship Program. And, you know, you can become at least a recipient of the newsletters. And they send you things. And this, in this latest newsletter, it talks about the most advanced public marksmanship facility in the United States. It is a CMP, Civilian Marksmanship Program, Talladega Marksmanship Park, a 500-acre facility located two miles from the Speedway in Alabama the most advanced public sports shooting facility in the United States, has electronic targets that relay scores and reports shots instantly to the shooter and even to spectators and even loads it into the CMP database. They have covered firing lines in case of bad weather. They have shotgun sporting clay stands, 15 stations. All that stuff is is part of paid for by Department of Defense and all that stuff as much as we don't hear much about the Constitution anymore, for whatever that means, the Second Amendment, all that stuff is essentially geared toward the concept of a well-regulated militia. At least that was the original intent. So if you're anywhere near Talladega, they have a schedule. What they do, they have basic pistol classes, basic rifle classes, introduction to shotguns, sporting clays, an IDPA match, an U.S. Arms Tactical Rifle match, a steel challenge, precision pistol, and it goes on and on and on and on. So when people start talking about the Second Amendment, we'll point them to this. This is part of the well-regulated militia that's outlined in Title X, much as people don't want to hear that either. But there it is. And that's actually, you can receive that if you sign up for the newsletter. Can I break in here a minute? Yeah, jump in. Did, did you see where the Yeti company had broke ties with not, was not going to support the NRA anymore? Well, the NRA went out and got all the Yeti coolers that everybody had. They filmed them blowing them up, shooting them, just blowing them up. <laughs> now Yeti is backed up. Wait, wait, you misunderstood. Nobody's understood, misunderstood you, Yeti. You said you were against the NRA, you were against guns, and you were so stupid. These hunters are using your coolers to pack their game in when they're hunting. And they were shooting them up, and boy, the Yeti people are in a turmoil because of the loss in revenue. I think they said in like four days, it was terrible. Well, that's what happens when you believe the mainstream media. And as a marketing tool, you decide that maybe you want to pander pander to this huge segment of the population that believes that guns are evil, that you've been, <laughs> you've been tricked into thinking. <laughs> so they find out that uh, yet another case, a round of fake news that most people in the United States don't think guns are evil. They think that the guns are uh, guns are evil. How about if you want to get on the basis, let's talk about how many guns they're claiming have killed children. How many children have been murdered by Planned Parenthood? Why, sure, absolutely. <laughs> and, and what about you know? I mean, there's there's so much. Uh, what's what's there's a word for that? That's called uh, being. Uh, it's not two faced. It's like two faced, but. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a word that describes that, and I can't think what it is right offhand. But, yeah, it's okay. Like, for example, we can bomb people in Yemen, and we can push this this idea that somebody's gassed their people, which there's no evidence of. Absolutely not. No evidence of that. So you make a charge with no evidence and take action on it, which to me is criminal. 
But that's another story. But Saudi Arabia can bomb kids and drones with our equipment in Yemen, and that's okay. Nobody says anything about that. So, you know, it's two-faced. It's uh, this, That word is just not getting away from it. No more Yeti spaghetti. Yeah, that's right, Grimnir. They stepped on it big time. They believed the wrong people. They believed they could break into this new market by spurning the concept of the Second Amendment and all that good stuff. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not a member of NRA. I think in many ways they don't always represent your best interests. So they're like any organization. They have to butter their bread certain ways. And so I don't really not have a real big interest in being a member. But that's another story. Hypocrite. Thank you, Hal. That was the word I was looking for. See how we live in this hypocritical society, and it just it's mind blowing. Anyway, I wanted to talk about CMP again, Civilian Marksmanship Program. If any other, for no other reason, just to turn the knife a little bit in the backs of those people who say that there is no militia, there's no what's a regulated militia. You know, it's all right there in Title Ten. All you have to do is read it, and then you have the CMP that was instituted to support it to actually support the well-regulated aspects of it, of the right to bear arms. And, you know, you can go to these places and learn how to do it if you don't know how to do it. Here's this article popped up, and I wanted to talk about this. I was actually kind of shocked. This popped up in one of my feeds just a few hours ago. And it's from the local newspaper, the Run of Times. I don't know. It was like I, I, like I felt like I was in another world for a minute when I read this. But it's an article headlined, Ticket, a parking ticket, ticket dismissed in Franklin Road parking case, which seems like, okay, so a parking ticket. Made the headlines top story. And it goes on to say that uh, Paul Tappert won't have to pay a fine for the ticket he got in March. And this is where all of a sudden my eyes started to glaze over a little bit. The company, the company that operates Roanoke's parking enforcement made that decision the company made the decision that he won't have to pay a fine so i'm sitting there saying whoa slow down slow down you know it's like cognitive dissonance setting in the first question that jumped in my mind was at what point did a city government or municipal government empower a private company to enforce laws or ordinances same thing when when did that happen and even to adjudicate them what? A private company is adjudicating parking enforcement? I mean, this is public property, right, that they're maintaining? Yeah, it turns out it is. But then it gets, a, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. I think this goes through all the the details of why the machines, they Wi-Fi enabled meters and all this stuff that they have at these parking areas. The kiosks, they call, 60, and it's only 65 spaces. Don't get me wrong. Here's the camel's nose under the tent, another indicator thereof. In the area of the city market building and along Franklin Road near Elmwood Park. So these are dedicated, at least Franklin Road's a dedicated highway. This means it's public domain. And this private company is regulating the parking and issuing fines and collecting fines. And you have to go to general district court to contest <laughs> to contest it. So in other words, you're guilty before being proved innocent because a private company said you were guilty. Are you catching what I'm trying to get to here? The, the government has, and the corporations, well, they've now just shown you that they are the very same thing, that they're no different. It's right here in front of you and the only thing i can make of this because the two examples that they use of people who quote beat these tickets they're both attorneys so unless you're telling jesus beforehand what better way to at least subconsciously implant into the minds of people that if the attorneys didn't challenge this on the basis of for example something like where do they (laughs) derive their authority to do this the quo warranto aspect if they didn't challenge it, why should anybody else even think about that? So it's it's like an acceptance. It's like a it's a really interesting and, and kind of ingenious way to convince people that, well, you know, it's okay that private companies fine you and collect your money and you have no recourse except to appeal it to general district court. Hmm. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, of course, we'll include all these links in the broadcaster, but this one's like had me shaking my head. I mean, where's what is this all about? How where did how did we get here? How did we get to this point? Interesting. But we have some good news. We have actually some, a bit of good news. So number one is that Big Pharma got punched in the face. Got punched in the face because a major study shows that the high cholesterol business is a complete myth and admits that statin drugs are totally worthless. This comes from a website called Health Consciousness and sources the article to different news engines. Three major studies now completely disprove the effectiveness of Big Pharma's most profitable drugs. Last week, a huge study published in The Lancet admitted that the risks of antidepressants in children and teens far outweigh the benefits as the drugs routinely increase suicidal behavior. Oh, wait a minute. I thought it was the guns that did that. No, it's the drugs. Out of 14 antidepressants, only one was shown to improve depression better than the placebo. And that's probably lithium, right, Judy? I would say so. Yeah, one of the old school ones. Now scientists are reporting that cholesterol drugs, which 15 million Americans are prescribed, are also completely worthless. A group of international researchers published a study in the BMJ Open Journal that found zero links between what's known as bad cholesterol and death as a result of heart disease in individuals over 60 years of age. In fact, the results found that 92% of people with high cholesterol actually live longer. And they go on to say that the best way to maintain good heart health is through healthy lifestyle habits. Well, guess what? Now, Jesus, we've talked about this, about how people worked in the past, and especially when we were growing up, and people who worked in the field, worked on farms, worked all the time, they ate. Do you want to reiterate that, Judy's book? Sure. They worked hard. They were up at sunrise and went to bed at sunset, and they usually ate a great big breakfast, and it was usually filled with fat, a lot of bacon, a lot of sausage, eggs, grits, real butter, and they worked. And you didn't see people so sick back then. And usually at dinner time, the wife would leave if she was in the field working or uh, helping gathering in the crops. She had a pot of beans on, cooked some cornbread, and that's what you ate for lunch. Anything left over, you ate that for supper. And people worked hard, so therefore they worked it off. Yeah, Grim, near eat all the bacon you want to. <laughs> you know, and, and I was kind of hooked into this whole thing, too. And of course, you know, a little over a year ago, I had my health incident. They still don't know why, don't know where they came from. I'm starting to have some suspicions, but that's for another time. But they tried to hook me up on Lipidor, and I refused it. And I had a long-running gun battle with the department head of a neurology at the... Durham Veterans Administration Hospital, which is part of the Duke University system, might as well be. And we had this long-running gun battle, and he finally admitted to me, he finally admitted to me that I was probably right. That you know, But this, this went on after all this about, you know, well, you know, how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know that? And I start laying out the evidence, and he finally says, well, yeah, you should probably forget about that. Lipidor. <laughs> I said what? So I so I took kind of a personal interest in this story, and I'm sure the the people who run Big Pharma also take quite a personal interest in it because the revelations of this are sure to have huge implications for the pharmaceutical industry, as the cholesterol drug Lipidor is the most profitable medication of all time raking in more than $140 billion in sales. Well, well, well. Let's see. Let's jump over to something I had also that relates to that. There we are. Where Wall Street admits that curing disease is bad for business. This is from Truth Dig. Goldman Sachs, actually, is the one who put this out in one of their reports. A Goldman analyst asked the clients... Is curing patients a sustainable business model? And that was written uh, in 
Arts Technica tech policy, curing disease, not a sustainable business model. It goes on to say, the potential to deliver one-shot cures is one of the most attractive aspects of gene therapy. However, such treatments offer a very different outlook with regard to recurring revenue versus chronic therapies. While this proposition carries tremendous value for patients and society, it could represent a challenge for genome medicine developers looking for sustained cash flow. Wow. I don't know why Nikola Tesla jumped in my mind when I was reading through that because of what J.P. Morgan did to him with respect to his Wardenclyffe project, where he had actually secretly <laughs> intended to create this tower, this system, however it worked, that would provide free energy, free electricity, to people in the area. That was actually a secret that Tesla had, and when J.P. Morgan found out that that was the real intent of the project, he canceled the project, took his money away, reportedly asking the question, where can you put the meter if it's free? So we see this there again, recurring and obvious cause to doubt just about everything you're told if it if there's a financial nexus if there's a financial construct involved you should probably doubt what you're being told or, or at least be very skeptical about it any thoughts on the money involved in medicine judy Spoon? it's a money maker we know that there's a cure for cancer they just it's just too big of a money maker they're gonna make money off of it and if you notice, Gary and I went through some of my medications, and we and I've come off of some of them simply because what I was taking, they gave me another prescription to counteract the side effects. So, I mean, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul on all this mess. Absolutely right. Absolutely right, Judy's boo. And on another front, we seem to still have this increasing problem with autism. Uh, the World Mercury Project just released a report on the 27th that indicated that now 1 in 59 children in the U.S. are affected by autism. I believe it was 1 in 68 previously, now it's 1 in 59. And they point out that the CDC is still stuck. They still, <laughs> they're still keeping their heads in the sand with respect to the latest autism spectrum disorder prevalence estimate among children born in 2006 in 11 states that were included in the report. The prevalence at age 8 was 1 in 59. Now compare that with the early 80s, which was only 35 years ago. The rate of autism was about 1 in 5,000. So let me add, we'll stop right there on the reading, but let me ask this question. If there was any other sort of adverse events or diseases or anything else that was increasing at this crazy rate, what do you think would the reaction be to that? Judy's, well, what would be, what do you think would be the reaction to anything? Oh, it would be stopped immediately. Be stopped immediately. Uh, you know, they, again, there you go. They're doing the autistic have autistic spectrum and they give them medicines they get all these therapies that they need and it's a money maker but if this was something else it would be stopped sure if it was if it, let's, if it was the ebola virus <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine how many shots we've had stuck in us by now <laughs> when looking at the chat room hal says that he thinks they found that statins are harmful let's go ahead and address that gd's boo a gentleman that we know who is college professor, very devout Christian man who has never had a drink in his life, wouldn't even know what to even look for. He looked rather pale, and he said that he had to watch what he ate and what he did because he had cirrhosis of the liver. And I turned around and I said, I know that you did not get that from drinking because you are not a drinker. He said, never had a drop of alcohol in my mouth. He said it came from taking statin drugs. So his case is documented that it came from the statin drugs that he was given. Right. Yep, yep, yep. And, you know, there we go. I mean, I don't want to get off into this because this could be two or three shows. But the, the, the evidence, overwhelming evidence for those who have their head out of the sand and who 
are objective and let the evidence lead them wherever it goes, the overwhelming evidence that there is, and probably has been, but there is now a, a ramped up concerted effort to reduce the population. Sure, sure, sure. Genocide, just in a different way outside of a blanket filled with smallpox. Right. Yep. Open your eyes, people. Open your eyes. Yeah, I don't know. Like I say, at the start, you know, people don't want to hear this. Okay, what else is going on? Uh, how about this? Out of the BBC, of all things, where the towers fell before the towers fell. <laughs> BBC News. European Union member states support a near total neo nicotinoid. There we go. Neo nicotinoid ban. I mean, that's at. That, um, insecticide that they use a neonicotinoid based insecticide but now it looks like the eu is going to ban it completely and the three different chemicals that are in that class and the restrictions apply to crops including maize wheat barley oats and rapeseed and also will push it further meaning almost all outdoor uses of the chemicals would be banned it's on the good news front, looks like the EU is going to rule in favor of the honeybees, although that is still a very hotly contested allegation that they affect the honeybees. Um, there are probably other things that do as well. Uh, what honeybees? Yeah. There's not any anymore. Yeah. They've already annihilated them. And I'm not sure exactly what all the contributors are to that. Now, certainly... That there is science that shows that the neonicotinoids do, in fact, impact the pollinators that way. But I'm, I'm starting to wonder if there aren't some other things going on as well. Because where are the frogs, where are the fireflies, we call them lightning bugs, where are they? Actually, the common housefly in many places has become a little bit of a rare commodity where they used to be everywhere, especially around farming operations. But farmers have even reported that the flies seem to be missing and that was last year. So I don't know. Something, you know, maybe there's more to this genocide than just people. <laughs> but then again, Natural Blaze reports that California defeats Monsanto. California, they finally did something <laughs> to be proud of. California defeats Monsanto in court to list glyphosate as a carcinogen. So if a lot of people remember that Proposition 65 went into effect some time back and California was going to list glyphosate as a probable carcinogen, just like the World Health Organization has announced. And Monsanto sued. They challenged the 2015 announcement. And long story short, they lost. <laughs> Monsanto got beat. Unbelievable, which is kind of a shot heard around the world, really. I don't know what else to say about that. That's just that's just pretty amazing to me. As far as Skump would say, that's all I got to say about that. That's really, yeah, that's really all I got to say about that. Yeah, and, and I, I kind of shake my head sometimes because of many bad things that seem to be going on. There is the occasional pushback. Maybe it's what they call in the military as a retrograde operation. <laughs> it's a fancy word for retreating and trying to stay alive in the process. As the frog he has opened a huge frozen frog leg leg distribution center. <laughs> I don't know, Frumpy. <laughs> I don't know. I can't find the frogs to start with. So that used to be something that was very plentiful. Gary will tell you, especially in the Appalachians and in the deep south, frogs would be on your lakes at night. And I don't believe there's a southern child anywhere that's not been frog gigging. We used to go a lot with my granddaddy. And he had a gig, but I had a twenty-two, and I would pop them, and they and they'd float to the top. That was a thing. You ate a lot of frog legs down here, but there's just not any frogs to gig. Just put it that way. They're gone. The noise that they would make on a warm spring night or warm summer night. I mean, it oh was, yeah, it was incredible. The sound was incredible, and you don't hear that anymore. Uh -uh. No. And so there again, we don't hear about a lot that's going on. Your sources of information are drying up, and they're drying up more rapidly all the time. That is a very concerning aspect, and I think we talked about that previously. That they're, they're just ways of cranking down on the information. People should ask themselves, even those who are skeptical about all this conspiracy theory, maybe they should ask themselves, if the information is not true, why is there such a concerted effort to suppress it? 
People should think about that. That there's a reason why they spend a whole lot of money so, to controlling a message. There's a particular message that they want you to hear. And so why is that? If something is true, it will st- it will stand up under all attack. What is that old saying, G.D.'s Boo? The truth will set the world on fire or something like that? The truth will stand when the earth's on fire. Thank you. The truth will stand when the earth's on fire. So if you have to spend all this money to control a message then the obvious answer that obviously means that the the message is false. I mean, it's only logic. I guess these world-renowned scientists, though, comes out of the Australian National Review. And this is a really important story that you don't hear many other places. World-renowned scientists have their labs shut down after they made a very troublesome vaccine discovery. Now, this is just... Recently, April 19th, 2018, back in the day, back in the 90s, Dr. Antoinette Gatti discovered the relationship between micro and nanoparticles, as well as a great number of pathologies, cardiovascular diseases, many forms of cancer, multiple neurological diseases, and autoimmune diseases. Since then, she's taken part in many international research projects, including the pathologies induced by depleted uranium, waste incineration, food polluted with inorganic particles, and more. Currently, she's the coordinator of the Italian Institute of Technology's project of nano-ecotoxicology, called INESE. Nice. She's also a selected expert of the FAO, WHO, for the safety in nanotechnological food and a member of the Nanotox Cluster of the European Commission, author of a book called nanopathology the health impact of nanoparticles and on the editorial board of the journal of biomaterials applications and a member of the cpcm of the italian ministry of defense furthermore she and her husband stefano montanari founded a laboratory called nanodiagnostics for the evaluation of the pathological tissues of patients it's presently at the university of modena and reggio emila italy But recently, the Italian police raided their home, took all their digital assets, including the laptops, computers, and flash drives, basically years of work and research. Because Gotti and Montanari had taken their research of nanodust and nanoparticles from in vivo, in other words, from living organisms, and in vitro, from test tubes, to what unseen contamination might reside in vaccines in 2016. As a result of doing that, they came under the microscope of the United States, the European, and the Italian authorities. They touched the third rail of medicine. They crossed the no-go zone with the purported crime being scientific research and discovery by finding nano-contamination in random vaccines. For the very first time they discovered something that no one knew. Vaccines had more than aluminum salt adjuvants, polysorbate 80, and other inorganic chemicals in them. They also harbored stainless steel, tungsten, copper, and other metals, and rare elements that don't belong in shots given to fetuses, pregnant women, newborn babies, and toddlers developing their lungs, immune, and nervous systems. So I'll just leave that where it is. And you can pick this up again at the Blogcaster, and there's a interview and a, a video. That's pretty disturbing. I want to touch on a little bit further down in this article, though, a couple of things that people need to hear that you probably haven't heard. And certainly, I'm sure the mainstream media didn't didn't put this out. But in 2016, a group of scientists at the CDC, the Criminal Drug Center, organization there called the Scientists Preserving Integrity, Diligence, and Ethics, as as counterintuitive as that may sound, they put out a list of complaints in the form of a letter to the CDC's chief of staff, where they said, It appears that our mission is being influenced and shaped by outside parties and rogue interests, and congressional intent for our agency is being circumvented by some of our leaders. What concerns us most is that it is becoming the norm and not the rare exception. That's pretty wild. Why would they say that if it weren't true? How about this? The media pays absolutely no attention to vaccine research that does not fit the narrative of their owners. 
The key here is to disseminate information in a peaceful manner. And remember, you still have the choice with regard to your decisions to make about your health and the health of your child. Don't be afraid to think for yourself. And in some places, that's becoming more and more difficult. But it's important to understand what you're up against. Know your enemy, how they operate. What do you know about operating? Didn't I talk about this already, Gigi's Boo, about the real-time satellite constellation that they're, they're intending to put up? No. Uh -uh. Oh, I didn't talk about that. Well, seems like uh, Warren Buffett has a handle on this and his Berkshire Hathaway business wire. Another thing that the media is just curiously not talking about, that a company called EarthNow intends to deliver real-time video, real-time video, via a large satellite constellation. They intend to deploy the large constellation of advanced imaging satellites that will deliver real-time continuous video of almost anywhere on Earth. What was that Will Smith movie, Enemy of the State? <laughs> well, here we go. I don't know whether this is public notice of a system that's already in place or whether it's testing the water or what it is. I mean, certainly the technology behind that must be pretty impressive. But the latest company to spin out from Intellectual Ventures, which is an incubator for such concepts as this, the latest company, EarthNow, recently closed a first round of financing with investments from Airbus, the SoftBank Group, Bill Gates, and Greg Weiler. The initial funding focuses primarily on maturing the overall system design to deliver innovative and unique real-time Earth observation services. Now, I recommend you read this entire article because this is a pretty big deal, especially when you consider a couple things. Number one consideration to me is who is the entity to which this information is delivered and what entity maintains and controls this large satellite constellation? It suggests that this is a singular monolithic kind of system that was probably intended to be operated by a singular monolithic group of people. Now, is this part of your new world order that you hear so many people talk about? I don't know, but then some other questions have come to mind with the proliferation of 5G, and maybe by the time this all comes out, it's something akin to 6G. And how about their intent to, the long term, as we many people have known, their intent to RFID chip, microchip people, just like cattle. And, well, wait a minute. Is it conceivable, this may be a little science fiction-y, is it conceivable that through the use of proliferated 5G and 6G, that your location can constantly be monitored via the RFID chips and visually monitored and interfaced through the use of artificial intelligence and whatnot to keep an eye on you no matter where you are. No place to run, no place to hide. Sounds a little out there, doesn't it? I don't know if it is so out there. Anyway, recommend folks take a look at that. 754 guy, we got away, got away again. Holy moly. And they had this really important stuff to, to touch on. But let me go ahead and just go ahead and kind of touch a little bit on it quickly here. Because this immediate threat, Tom Clancy, clear and present danger type of stuff that's really not being talked about is this apparent weakening of our electromagnetic field. And you hear people talk about the poles moving around, and they, and to an extent they do all the time anyway. They kind of wander around a little bit. But apparently they're wandering a little more than normal. About 780,000 years ago, as far as we can tell, there was, in fact, a field reversal. I'm not going to use the pole flip thing because that brings up all kinds of crazy ideas in people's heads about the earth spinning around and all that. But we'll talk about a magnetic reversal, which has happened. There's, there's evidence of that. And they think that the last complete reversal we had was about 780,000 years ago. But we don't know exactly what happens on Earth when that occurs. And the reason I say that is there's pretty strong evidence that there is, at least the poles are moving in a direction where a pole reversal could happen. And it's happening faster than they anticipated the changes are. 
So it's something to look at. It's very important because the magnetic field does kind of important stuff like protecting us from the solar winds and the cosmic radiation. kind of helps maintain our ionosphere, which helps protect us from ultraviolet light from the sun, UVB particularly. And so if that goes away, the effect on life on Earth could be quite dramatic and especially on people. But, you know, when you start seeing plants are affected, DNA is affected, when you look at this evidence, it's a lot to consider. There's all kinds of evidence, including a mysterious anomaly under Africa is radically weakening the Earth's magnetic field, and that's from a science alert. This evidence is pushing scientists to think they could actually change with reversing the fields that could actually happen. It almost happened. It came close, and it happens. It comes close occasionally, apparently, according to the evidence, <clears throat> that it came close about 40,000 years ago. It didn't completely reverse. But nobody really knows for sure if it's imminent or whether it's a little ways down the road or, or what. But the evidence is very strong that something is happening. The weakening is actually occurring. That's been shown. There's lots of cultural evidence that talks about some of the past effects of these sorts of events. We really don't know exactly what will occur. There's one article from Science that talks about that hyperactive magnetic fields may have led to one of the Earth's major extinctions. And what they fancy word hyperactive, what they really mean is rapid reversals of Earth's magnetic field 550 million years ago, destroyed a large part of the ozone layer, and let a flood of ultraviolet radiation come through, which devastated the unusual creatures of the so-called geologic period at that time, and triggered an evolutionary flight from light that led to the Cambrian explosion of animal groups. And it's referred to as a Kotlinian crisis. So during this time, large, soft-bodied organisms, often shaped like disks or fronds, had lived on or in shallow horizontal burrows beneath thick mats of bacteria, which, unlike today, coated the seafloor. goes on and on. It goes on to say that this event led to the rapid emergence of new species with complex body parts, hard parts for defense, and sophisticated eyes. And that burrowing became a more common trait. So, this is very interesting reading. And also indicates that 20 to 40 percent of the ozone coverage might have been lost, in turn, doubling the amount of ultraviolet radiation that reached the Earth. So, you might want to study up on what ultraviolet radiation will do to you. And we will include all these links in the blogcaster. This article here from NASA that talks about ultraviolet radiation, how it affects life on Earth. And that's from 2001. Interestingly, September 6, 2001. Well worth the read and something to consider as you talk about this prepper stuff that people aren't involved with. Yeah, and Frumpy says it messes up bird migration. Yeah, at the very least, <laughs> if it doesn't outright blind them from the ultraviolet light. So, yeah, lots to look at. Hate to end on a bad note, so I won't end on a bad note. Let's end on a good note, Gigi's boo. All right. What do you think about that? They're right ahead. I don't know how many people out there eat yogurt, but there's a company called Chobani. Chobani is an American brand produced by Chobani LLC and was founded in 2005 when a fellow by the name of Hamdi Ulukaya bought a plant in a town of South Edmiston, New York, and started his own unique brand of yogurt and launched it in 2007. Ulukaya is a Turkish Kurd who immigrated to the United States, came here with nothing, and started this yogurt operation, which has grown pretty large. But he did something really important for his people, and it's something I want you to hear as we close out here. In the modern workplace, hugging the boss may not be the first instinct of many employees. Oh, my God! But there were hugs aplenty this morning at the Chobani yogurt plant in upstate New York. Company founder Hamdi Ulakaya made an announcement. We used to work together. Now we are partners. Real partners, financial partners. Ulakaya is giving his employees a 10% stake in the company when it goes public or is sold. It's a windfall that could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars each. That's amazing. Amazing. 
Who does that? Completely unexpected. Um, I think that everyone is so excited. That's two plants and more than 2,000 employees, a move more Silicon Valley than upstate New York. Why do this? You know, it's been my dream. I like to get back to them and say, you and this community and this country has been so great to us, and I'd like to return that favor back to you. The success of Chobani, a brand not 10 years old but worth billions, could only happen in America, says Ulukaya, an immigrant from Turkey who started with nothing. You can always tell yourself that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, but truly believe in it is a miracle. Maybe the miracle is that they all believe. Terry Edmonds is employee number six. I think about how little we started and how hard all these people worked to, to bring us to what we have. And I'm very proud. The money means a lot, say these folks, but being appreciated means even more. Okay, Boo Boo Bear, that's it for us tonight. We ran a little bit over, but the editing, I'm sure, will we'll take care of that. Yep. Anything you'd oh. like to say? Well, what I always say, remember to take the road less travel, and I love you big to my heart. That's right. Thanks for joining us tonight on The Road Less Traveled with Gary L. and Chi Boo on reallibertymedia.com, RLM Radio. Look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same channel. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>